Hi, David Healy here. Welcome to the first lesson in this contact scripting video series. You see me looking down or looking over to my other monitor, it's just because I've got notes and things going on on different screens, but I'm still with you. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself first, and then I'll discuss what we're going to be looking at in this series, and in particular in this lesson. So I've been writing computer programs now for over a decade, and in the last few years I've been working on contact scripting. And in that time I've produced um, scripts for about 50 commercial sample libraries for a range of developers including uh, Strezov Sampling, Waze Factory, Samplism, Frank Macchia, Paperstone Studios, Tronsonic and quite a few others that I can't remember at the moment. I've also developed many private libraries and I continually develop my personal scripting framework and I use that to write scripts more quickly and efficiently and we'll be looking at that in more detail in the later lessons. So I created this series of videos because I wanted to share the knowledge and experience I've gained writing scripts with other people. I know the difficulty of getting started with creating virtual instruments and learning any new programming language can be difficult but um, the, the resources for contact seem to be quite limited and I wanted to be able to give would-be developers a head start. As far as I know there are no colleges or universities that provide a course on writing contact scripts or creating sample libraries for that matter and there are no dedicated online courses so I wanted to create something that's up to date and that would take the novice scripter from start to finish in the production of a sample library. The contact side of it, not the sampling side of it. And I wanted to provide a solid foundation from which you'd be able to create your own libraries and work on commercial projects with other developers. So this first lesson is aimed at the absolute beginner who's never written any code and is perhaps fairly new to contact. I'm going to take you from the very first principle, step by step, into the world of contact scripting and gen um, more general computer programming. This lesson will also provide a wealth of information for those of you who have some programming experience but are perhaps new to contact scripting or developing sample libraries with contact. You'll be able to see how the programming principles that you already know can be applied to the creation of a virtual instrument. Although this series is intended to be as up-to-date as possible with regard to the latest contact scripting techniques, I'm going to be using contact for throughout all these videos and the example instruments that we're going to create, I'm going to be using contact for to develop those. The reason for that is that I wanted to make this series as accessible to as many people as possible and the scripting capabilities of contact for and contact five are almost identical with a few additions in contact 5 but we won't be covering those and we don't need to cover them because by the time we've gone through these lessons you'll be able to go to the contact 5 reference manual if you're using contact 5 and you'll be able to look up those extra features and use them in your scripts without any further instruction from me. By the end of this first lesson in the series you should be familiar with the basic principles of computer programming and not only will you have a solid foundation in contact scripting, but you'll also have a good grasp of general programming techniques that can be applied to almost any programming language. I'm going to walk you step by step through the process of creating a drum kit sample library from start to finish. The instrument we're going to create, in fact, let's have a look at it now. So this is what it's going to look like. It's very um, simple. There's no fancy interface or anything like that. We'll move on to that kind of stuff in the later lessons. But this instrument includes round robin repetitions, multiple dynamic layers, release triggers, and a note name readout. So when you press a key, it will display the note name and the octave number. As an extra feature, it also incorporates what I call a hi hat cutoff. So when you play, it works like a real. Uh, drum kit in the sense that when you play the hi-hat open if you then close the hi-hat it'll cut off that open sound so we're going to incorporate that as well. 
Now in the study materials folder that you should have got with this video, um, you should have three folders inside there and a file called samplemap.txt. Now in the instruments folder that's um, there's, there's nothing in there that's empty and I'm not providing you with the finished instruments because the whole purpose of these lessons is to get you writing the instruments. So there's no finished instruments, but if we go down to the resources folder, there's inside there there's a folder called pictures, and the resources folder is something we'll use throughout uh, all these lessons as we develop instruments. And generally what we'll put in here are pictures, that's things like um, knobs and sliders and button images, um, the, the instrument skin, so the background wallpaper, and um, things like that, that's what goes in pictures. Also in the resources folder we can put things like impulse responses if we were going to use the convolution reverb and later on we'll also be putting our scripts in here. So if you go into pictures you'll see there's a file called Acme Drum Wallpaper PNG and that's the skin that we're going to apply to the instrument. And there's also the Photoshop document of that if you want to take a look and you want to edit it or anything like that that's there for you as well. In the samples folder we have the instrument samples and they're just organized into subfolders and they should be pretty straightforward so we've got cymbals, hi-hats, kicks, snare and toms. And these were provided for us for use in this, um, this lesson by Nicholas uh, Signet who I wrote a script for him, I think it was the last year or the year before, for his instrument Alive Underground Drums. And it's a great drum kit library, and there's a, another video that I've made where I talk about that library in more detail, but you should check it out. Nicholas has provided those samples for free for this, which is very kind of him. And you can find that instrument Alive Underground Drums, you can find that at samplism.com. You'll also notice that the samples are in format the extension. Instead of being a, a WAV file, uh, they end in NCW, and that's just contacts compressed WAV format. So it's um, it's a lossless compression format. And finally, we've got the sample map, and we'll use this later on when we map the samples inside contact. And this is just really a thing, so I can remember which keys which samples should be assigned to. Now we're going to cover a lot of different topics in this first lesson to make sure you've got a really solid foundation before moving on to the later lessons, if you choose to move on to the later lessons. We're going to look at the components of a contact sample library, then we're going to sort of follow that by a general overview of contact scripting, and then we'll start by writing some exercise scripts and I'll talk to you about the basic building blocks of a contact script. So it's kind of theory first, then practical. So after we've completed those exercises, we'll actually start building the drum kit script and we're gonna look at, uh, first of all, how we import the samples and how we organize them within contact. So like I said, this is really the basic stuff, but it's the kind of thing you need to know for going on to more advanced uh, subjects. So after we've mapped the samples in contact and we've imported them in and organized them, we're going to write the drum kit script and we're going to incorporate all those features I mentioned earlier, the round robin and the release triggers and the hi-hat cutoff and stuff like that. Once we've completed the script and completed the instrument, I'm going to show you some alternate methods to create the same instrument, or, well it's nearly the same instrument, but it won't use any scripting. And the reasons why I'm going to show you that and why we're going to build this second version will be explained later on. I'll go into more detail about that. Now as this lesson is aimed at the complete beginner, I'll be getting right down to the basics. So those of you who have some prior programming experience, you may find some parts a little slow. And if you feel you understand enough already about a particular topic that I'm talking about, just feel free to skip ahead to the next section. But I have to, I hope that I don't go too slow for people, but I think that'd be better than going too fast. 
so I apologize if you if you do find it a little slow. Now although this is a beginner lesson, I'm going to assume you have a certain level of knowledge when it comes to digital music in general, such as what an audio sample is and what MIDI is and how it's used with Contact. And you should be able to open up Contact either as a plugin or in standalone mode and be able to operate it and use virtual instruments in it and all that kind of stuff because I won't be going into that in much detail if, if I do cover that at all. Okay, that about sums up for this introduction to the series. Let's move on to the next video and I'm going to show you the components of a contact sample library and we'll start getting into contact and seeing how we develop our instruments. So I'll see you there.